we've now worked on generating main points, which is an invention category. We've talked about organizing them. That's an arrangement category. Now I want to turn and talk to some style for those main points. Now, at the basic level, we want the main points to be concise and memorable. Uh, we'll get back to this, but you're not doing the main point, explaining all of the main point in its phrasing, right? Because that's, that's part of the ar overall argument. That's partly support, part warrant. So that claim, we want that main point, that claim to be phrased as memorably and concisely as we can. Because I, as I've said before, I really want the audience to be able to remember the claims. If they're going to remember anything, I want it to be the thesis and the supporting claims. Ideally, they would remember the claims and that they were persuasive. That would be a good goal. So I want my claims, and in, in, with this being the goal, in terms of phrasing them, I want my claims to be short sentences, and I want them to use vivid verbs. Now I should point out, obviously, this is pretty culturally specific, language specific advice here. So as we move this into uh, you know, discussion forums, I would be interested in hearing how and where this might differ in other languages. But for now, let's see how we can make our points as concisely as possible. So if you take a look at this, at this sample uh, uh, thesis here, universities should make public speaking a graduation requirement. I'm just staying with that as a, as a general example here. So here are the two main points. Though the existing list of requirements is rather long, we could easily add public speaking to the list in a way that doesn't disrupt too many majors and other activities. <laughs> and I, lest I forget, given the importance of public speaking and its role in the university and the workforce, a student leaving a university with a basic understanding of public speaking is well positioned indeed. So those are way too long. Those are crazy long. Uh, they might be accurate, but we want to get more concise. So if you take a look at these, uh, just take a look at these now, and what I want you to do is, on a sheet of paper or just mumbling to yourself, try to get to the core idea of these points in like five to ten words, okay? Uh, much more concise phrasing on that. Here's one way you might run that. So universities should make public speaking a graduation requirement. Why? Because universities can easily add public speaking to their requirements, and public speaking adds value to a college degree. So when I get into each one of those points, I can explain what I mean. I can do that in the speech itself. But in the intro and at the broadest level, I want the crux of the argument stated as memorably as possible while still retaining its accuracy. So I really want to aim for fewer words, uh, uh, more concise phrasing. So let's do this again. So take a look at this one. Cities should ban smoking in public places. So here in the U.S., we've got uh, uh, public smoking bans. So you can, you know, in some places you can't smoke inside bars or restaurants. So if you are arguing for one of these, you could say, all right, environmental tobacco smoke has generally been shown to be harmful. This is particularly relevant in public places where workers and children might not have the ability to vo avoid such smoke. And though there might be some legal challenges, smoking bans in other cities in American states have often withstood these challenges. Again, those are too long. Take a look at these and think about how you might get these phrased more concisely. Here's one option. Cities should ban smoking in public places. Why? Public smoking bans improve public health, and many cities have easily implemented such bans. So keeping that in mind, let's play around with those verbs a bit, because we want to have vivid verbs. That's kind of a good, nice way of phrasing these. So we could say public smoking bans improve public health. We could say augments public health, protects the public. Uh, we could jump around and to the second point. We could say other cities have easily implemented such bans. Public smoking bans have worked in many cities. Public smoking bans are easy to implement. So I kind of lost in that final version. I lost cities from there, but it's a little bit more concise and, and easy to implement. I'm sort of, that's, that seems to me to be the core of that claim. So maybe losing the cities component on that is totally fine because I can pick that up in the discussion of that point. So you know, remember, as you're doing this, mumble so that you can play around with the phrasing. And this ability to be thinking in terms of not sound bites, that's not the right word for this, but being able to think in terms of clear, concise, memorable claims works in so many other settings, right? So let's say it's a job interview. So do you think you'll be good here at Corporation X? Well, I have expertise in the areas that you're looking for, and I actually did very well in another similar position. Now, let me talk a little bit about my expertise. Man, those are two pretty good claims that you would want that interviewer to remember. 
certainly as they're discussing you with the other hiring you know, people, people who are making that decision. Um, I've, had, I've had a chance to work with a number of research scientists, and this really works well here, not only for doing conference presentations, but certainly for talking to the public about research. So, hypothetically, the public says, tell me a little bit about your research and how it impacts me. Well, says uh, the biomedical person, my research better, helps us better understand biomedical industries. And that research can equip you to be a better consumer, and that research can drive the industry to make improvements that make your life easier. Well, those phrases, those claims will be explained when you explain them. You can get to that in the speech, but the phrasing there is doing a lot of work for you. Uh, it's making those claims have punch. It's making them concise and memorable. So now we're going to leave main points. We've talked about coming up with main points, arranging main points, and phrasing main points. So now, in the last section of this week's material, we're going to move from main points to coming up with support for those main points.